Here we go. It's interesting now that we come to the meat of the program. It's time to meet our outstanding business leaders. And each one will be introduced by a student this evening. Okay. And first, I'd like to welcome to the stage Brooke Engelhart, class of 2025, studying her BBA in marketing and a Northwood University Fresh Air Ambassador, who will introduce our first outstanding business leader and the Richard DeVos Young Entrepreneur Award winner, Eric July, the CEO and founder of Ripiverse. Good evening, distinguished. It is so funny hearing like these distinguished people say Ripiverse. <laughs> let's let's listen to that again. That that's really funny. Our award winner, Eric July, the CEO and founder of Ripiverse. Good evening, distinguished guests. My name is Brooke Engelhart, and I'm currently a junior at Northwood studying digital marketing. Mm. Tonight, I have the honor of speaking to you about an imaginative entrepreneur, a passionate advocate for creativity, and a trailblazer in the world of comics, Eric. A trailblazer? A trailblazer in the world of comics. Eric July? A trailblazer? This is the same, this Northwood University is the same place that posted on their Instagram that Eric July had the most successful crowdfunded comic of all time, even though Eric has gone to great lengths to remind people that his comic books were not crowdfunded. So part of the reason I guess he was given this award is because of that, because it's listed here in their little post about him. And I know for a fact, and people have argued about this, that Eric July has stated on many occasions that Isom is not a crowdfunded comic book. He he has been very adamant about that. Eric July. Oh, there's more? In 2022, Eric embarked on a journey to revitalize the comic book industry by founding Ripiverse. No, he went on a journey to make money for himself. Um, the comic book industry did not need Eric July to revitalize it. That's, again, his whole stick, his spiel, is that he the, the comic book industry is dying, except for like this one and this one and this one. But yeah, it's all dying, and, and I'm trying to make a difference. No, you're trying to sell comic books. One book a year, yeah, one book a year isn't enough to revitalize the comic book industry. He's not putting anything back into the comic book industry. A comic book company dedicated to recapturing the essence of the golden age of comics. With a passion What's the golden age of comics when they when the comic book industry went bust in the 90s? He's trying to recapture the era that almost killed the comic book industry. He he always talks about that. The 90s, the 90s, the 90s. All right, let's continue. In a desire to bring back the glory days of the comic book industry, Eric envisioned Ripiverse as a sanctuary where readers could immerse themselves in unforgettable tales, escape the pressures of everyday life, and experience the magic of storytelling in its purest form. Wow. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say about that. That is some of the biggest bullshit I have ever heard. Unforgettable. A sanctuary. This is the same man that gets on camera with his low cow co-host each week and attacks people. He attacks women, attacks people with disabilities, attacks queer people, attacks diversity. He he does that every single week. But somehow the Ripiverse is supposed to be a sanctuary? Ripiverse started with a bang. The story unfolded with the release of Isom. That's true. It started with the bang and it's just been going downhill ever since. That's true. 
that's that's absolutely true. Number one, which you'll be able to peek into a world of later this evening. A 96 page comic book written by Eric himself, including a character named Avery Silman, who is an entry level hero known as Isom. Entry level hero, right? So first of all, he's not a hero. In that comic book, he retired. He starts out the comic already retired, no longer fighting crime. So not a hero anymore. And entry level is also wrong because he retired from being a hero. So he, it wasn't entry level either. So neither one of those make any sense in regards to Isom. Not entry level, not a hero in issue number one. Groundbreaking project shattered records and captured the hearts of comic book enthusiasts around the globe. Assembling an astonishing $2.6 million in funding, Eric's work soared to unparalleled. No, it was not $2.6 million in funding. It was not $2.6 million in funding. Funding is the key word there. It was not a crowdfunded comic book. And Eric is sitting right behind her when she says that. This comic book was not funded by $2.6 The comic books and the merchandise was purchased for $2.6 Funding was never in the, in the conversation at all. Million dollars in funding, Eric's work soared to unparalleled heights, earning its place as the most successful crowdfunded comic book project in history. Are you going to correct them, Eric? Are you going to sit back there while they say that? You're not going to correct her on this? That is part of the criteria. That's part of the criteria of this award is, is this funding thing, this crowdfunding thing. He's sitting back there while she's saying that. If I were to get on camera and be like, oh, Isom was crowdfunded. You know what Eric would say? It wasn't fucking crowdfunded. It wasn't, I put up all the money myself. He says it on multiple streams as the businessman that he is on his videos. I paid for all of it myself. I put, what, $300,000 into my business. It was not crowdfunded. What makes this achievement even more extraordinary is the manner it was accomplished. Eric refrained from the conventional route of utilizing traditional crowdfunding sites, opting instead to run the campaign on Riververse's dedicated website. You know why? Because it wasn't crowdfunded. This bold decision not only showcased Eric's entrepreneurial awareness, but also demonstrated his unwavering commitment to maintaining creative control and fostering direct connections with his audience. I remember that very vividly, that he was he argued about PayPal and they were holding onto his money and all that other shit. It was a big deal. So he was forced uh i think financially to do it a different way by the campaign's conclusion eric had surpassed all expectations raising an astounding 3.7 million dollars this accomplishment stands as a testament to eric he didn't raise that money it wasn't crowdfunding fuck this accomplishment stands as a testament to eric's unique dedication his down-to-earth leadership style and his ability to inspire <laughs> Did she just say down to earth leadership style? Hold on. I, I need to. Here we go. His down to earth leadership style. What the hold on. Let's go back a little bit more. Conclusion. Eric had surpassed all expectations, raising an astounding three point seven million dollars. This accomplishment stands as a testament to Eric's unique dedication, down-to-earth leadership style, no. and his ability to inspire others to rally behind a shared vision. You know, that's actually not false. That's not false. It's a little misleading, but it's not false. I would say, speaking to, like, the minions, the people that are sort of like the Eric July shills, um, the Ripa idiots on social media and stuff, the people that are blindly buying stuff from him or whatever. Yeah. He's convinced them to rally behind him. That's, that's true. But Eric's impact extends far beyond the world of comics. 
He's a voice of reason and a champion of individual liberty. Voice of reason? On what fucking planet? What fucking planet is Eric July a voice of reason? Hold the fuck up. We got to go back. Shared vision. But Eric's impact extends far beyond the world of comics. He's a voice of reason and a champion of individual liberty. What individual liberty are we talking about? Are we talking about the fact that he's constantly telling people they shouldn't be able to do stuff? Is that the individual liberty we're talking about? He spends a big chunk of his time online attacking people for their freedom of speech, freedom of expression, um, claiming to be a, a anarcho-capitalist, libertarian, but constantly talking about people like they can't do the, the things they want to do with their lives. How is that? How is he any of these things? The fuck? Through activism and advocacy, he tirelessly fights for justice, equality, and freedom, challenging the Equality? Eric July fights for equality? Holy fuck. Tirelessly fights for justice, equality, and freedom, challenging the status quo, and empowering others to stand up for what they believe in. Wow. Okay. That might rub some people the wrong way, but at Northwood, these ideas are also encapsulated by the Northwood idea and our approach to learning. Therefore, we are ecstatic to honor him. Why would that rub people the wrong way? Listen to what she just said, right? Why would, why would, if this was true about Eric, why would this rub people the wrong way? Unless she's talking about conservatives. Otherwise, I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Believe in. That might rub some people the wrong way, but at Northwood, these ideas are also encapsulated by the Northwood idea and our approach to learning. Therefore, we are ecstatic to honor him. In Eric, we find not only an inspirational business leader, but also a compassionate trailblazer, a creative genius, and truly inventive. A genius. <laughs> All right. All right, sis, whatever. His journey serves as a reminder that with passion, perseverance, and unwavering determination, Anything is possible. And, you know, 500 and some thousand subscribers on YouTube built by making anti-woke content over the pandemic, um, aligning themselves with the, you know, with the right people who also do the same kind of content um, means that you could sell merchandise to people that subscribe to your YouTube channel. Because trust and believe, Eric would have none of this stuff without his YouTube channel. And that's not saying that he did not work on his YouTube channel. That's not me saying that. I'm saying that the comic book stuff, everything else that comes along with this is simply selling merchandise to the existing subscribers on his channel who are not comic book fans. And I'm excited to highlight someone that I found so inspiring to my educational process too. In a world often filled with division and discord, Eric's commitment to dialogue and understanding serves as a beacon of hope. He recognizes that true progress is achieved not through confrontation and conflict, but through empathy. Not through confrontation and conflict? Not through confrontation and conflict? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A world often filled with division and discord. Eric's commitment to dialogue and understanding serves as a beacon of hope. 
He recognizes that true progress is achieved not through confrontation and conflict, but through empathy, compassion, and a willingness to listen to one another's perspectives. Does she even know Eric? Does she does she has she ever looked at his YouTube channel? Any of his videos? Wow. By fostering open and respectful conversations, Eric <laughs> encourages us to find common ground, bridge our differences, and work together towards a brighter future for all. <laughs> As we celebrate the remarkable achievements. <laughs> oh my god what the fuck <sighs> you have to be fucking kidding me hold on oh my god and a willingness to listen to one another's perspectives by fostering open and respectful conversations, Eric encourages us to find common ground, bridge our differences, and work together towards a brighter future for all. Is that what he did when he was monetizing his haters? Was that was that building that bridge? When he spent like, I don't know, two or three years making videos where anytime somebody criticized him, he would monetize his haters? Was that the is that the bridge you're talking about? It's becoming more and more obvious to me why. He stopped making those kinds of videos. But to sit here for her to say that he builds bridges with conversation and, and empathy or whatever, who the fuck are you talking about? You're not talking about Eric. You're not talking about, like just this past week, he did a whole video or a stream with Az with a bunch of video clips that were anti-gay, anti-trans. How is that empathy? How is that building a bridge? How is that wanting people to be the best for themselves? This is extremely fucking stupid. As we celebrate the remarkable achievements of Eric and Ripiverse, let us be inspired to pursue our own dreams, to break barriers, and to create a brighter future for generations to come. Please welcome me in recognizing the 2024 Richard DeVos Young Entrepreneur Award winner, Eric July. We haven't even gotten to Eric yet. That was fucking awful. That was fucking awful. Holy shit. It is weird. It is weird because I don't know who the fuck they're talking about. They're not talking about Eric. I'm going to say right now, Eric, um, please get a stylist. Please. Please. Please get a proper stylist. Who's doing this audio? It's the uh, microphone's please give a round of applause for Brooke. That was amazing. I... And... Originally, I came here with a plan, but that kind of got derailed after um, my experience with you all. So I'm going to hype you all up. I usually do these sort of events and speak at colleges. And it's this hands down has been the best experience. Speak at colleges. When is. um When is Eric spoke at colleges? Was there I'm trying to think, was there ever a video clip of him speaking at a college? I don't know. I'm not saying he never has, but I, I don't remember that ever being anything we've talked about. Anyway. Experience that I've had. <laughs> and of course, that's to be attributed to you guys' ethics. I love that you have a code of ethics. Fresh. You guys', is, you guys' is ethics. You guys'. Is. Okay. Share. And a lot of that are as concepts that I, of course, believe in and I try to instill in it, really everything it is um, that I do. So I am incredibly thankful for you guys um, to honor me with this. I've been able to meet all of these lovely people. And I met a lot of you guys last night at the, um, uh, the 20 under 40. That's been amazing seeing these young people. I, I'm as inspired as I have ever, ever been. But my introduction, ironically, to Northwood was uh, my, my um, aunt. She's out of Dallas. She went to actual Northwood and Cedar Hill. Um, and that was my first introduction. And then when we got, I'll be honest, the, the pre speech here with her or whatever, like was more entertaining than this, this, I don't know what this is all about. Anyway, let's continue. Contacted and I was heard that I wanted that you guys wanted to honor me. I was like, Oh, what did I do? Thought I was in trouble. Um, but no, to, oh, to be able joke. to 
have with no a, laughter a, a university where you guys are instilling these these core concepts that a lot of young people need to of course adhere to is phenomenal I pick it up with everybody that I've had a conversation with, whether they're a student now, whether they um, have been around the block. It's it's I'm so appreciative of that. And uh, you guys have welcomed me as family. So I would love to do anything. I said this. I told you, if you guys want me back whenever I will do it. Hands down. Just say when I'm so, again, incredibly appreciative. You know, what's funny to me, um, even though she was spitting a lot of cap, there's a lot of lies in her statements about Eric. Clearly. Clearly, she's done public speaking. She understands how to to get up there and say what she has to say or whatever. Um, Eric sort of is fumbling around a bit with this. And it doesn't seem like there's anything of any importance. I mean, I guess the most relatable thing is him talking about, like, how he was referred by a family member to the school. But... What is he saying as as a b- person receiving an award for business? What is he saying about business here that inspires anybody? Of you all, but of course we've all been talking about markets, entrepreneurship, and I, I love to talk to you guys ear off um, about that. But I just leave you guys with this: capitalism, as I define it, is the private ownership of goods and services, and the free and voluntary exchange of those private goods and services. And oftentimes, unfortunately, because folks that maybe uh, adhere to more socialistic lines of thinking, they have painted it to mean something that it is not. The way that I see it, the best way to honor your fellow man, to serve your fellow man, is to contribute to capitalism. The thing that I find the most fulfillment in everything it is that we, we have been able to accomplish, yes, $10 million nearly in two years is, is awesome, but the fact that we are able to give good-paying jobs to awesome people that love what it is that they do. Is- you know what? He's not disputing the crowdfunding stuff. She talked quite extensively about the crowdfunding part. You know what I mean? Like he sat back there while she was saying funding, raising, crowdfunding. He sat behind her while she was saying all that. And now he's standing up. He has the opportunity to refute that and say, you know, correction, it wasn't crowdfunded. As a business person, as a business person, I saved up this money and then used it to start my business. Because that's what he did wasn't crowdfunded. I- I'm sorry it gets under my skin, but he made such a big deal about his comic book not being crowdfunded in the beginning that the fact that he's standing up here accepting an award while somebody who introduced him mentioned crowdfunding more than once and he has not corrected that is quite annoying. 